Hey guys, today I'm going to talk a little bit about my Etsy shop. And right here, I'm just making a brand pattern um, while I talk about this. Uh, so my shop is called Printy Cat. And you might be wondering why, because I go by Gabriella Illustration, both here on YouTube and on Instagram. And basically it's because the name was already taken for an Etsy shop. So I had to come up with something else. And I really wanted my cat Milo to be a part of the shop. So I came up with like a little comic um, where I, as Gabriella Illustration, make all the art and he, Milo, is the one shipping everything and printing everything for you guys. And it would have been called Milo Mail or something like that instead of Happy Mail like most people do. So yeah, he was definitely um, going to be a huge part of the shop. So I was definitely looking for names that would incorporate him without actually using his name Milo because I didn't want it to be even more confusing with, you know, my name Gabriella and then his name Milo. I don't know. Maybe I thought too much about this and it wasn't that big of a deal either way. So I landed on a couple. The one that I was really thinking about going with was actually called inky cat or the inked cat, something with ink and cats because I use a lot of ink in my work and obviously printer ink applies as well. So I thought it'd be really cute, but obviously when I looked it up, there were a lot of people already using that name. So I was brainstorming with my sister some other names and she called out printy cat and the name was born. <laughs> so credit to my sister for coming up with printy cat. Now, I got Milo when I was like nine years old, and that was way before I was really thinking about becoming an artist or really taking art very seriously. So he's been there really from the beginning. So that's why it was really important that he was a part of the branding of my shop. Milo was always sitting on my desk while I made art. He sat on the work I was doing. He sat on my laptop. He would occasionally drink from my paint water. He even knocked over an entire bottle of black ink onto a piece I was working on once. He was honestly kind of a jerk most of the time, but I loved him. And unfortunately, he passed away last year in August, just as I was preparing to open my Etsy store in October. But I ended up moving it to February of this year. It was just really hard to move forward with the shop without him, but he still lives on in the artwork that I make and... I'm really happy that I get to share him with you guys in that way. So yeah, that's how my Etsy shop got its name and its branding. So sorry if the beginning was a bit sad, but we're going to move on now to talking a little bit about my journey with opening this shop and we're going to talk about prints. So in the beginning, I decided I was going to be outsourcing everything and it was just going to be easier because then I didn't have to buy a printer. I didn't have to buy a sticker maker and all the things that went along with that and complications and everything. So I was just trying to do it as quickly as possible and not have to buy as much equipment. So I found a local printer and decided to send them a few things, the least amount of prints that I could print with them. And I'm just going to show you what happened with, <laughs> with that and why I decided to ultimately buy my own printer in the end. Okay, so this is the print that we're talking about. And aside from it being very dark and the color kind of being overwhelmingly green, uh, we're gonna push that aside because that's something that I'm sure the printer would have been willing to work with and we could have fixed that. The problem that arose with this printer was more to do with uh, a technical issue and so it's pretty hard to see. I'll try to zoom in in a bit, but basically there's a lot of horizontal lines running through this piece. And like I said, you can't really tell right here, but I'll, I'll get closer. In real life, you can see it, it's very prominent. So I took this back to them and I showed them and they were very um, understanding about it. And they were like, oh yeah, it's our printer. It's making those lines. It shouldn't be making those lines. Yeah, you can kind of see them a little better here. And they told me that the issue was the paper type, um, and which I agreed my paper type was on the cheaper end and I had no problem switching papers. So they gave me some samples to choose a different paper. And in these samples, I saw the lines again in their actual samples. So I asked 
of course, you know, what they recommended as far as a paper type. And they told me to get a textured canvas paper that would hide the lines that their printer was making. So their solution was for me to spend more money on a paper type that would hide their mistakes. Let me just show you guys real quick. After I bought my printer, I reprinted this exact illustration and it came out crystal clear. No problems, no issues with the color. It was perfectly fine. And I don't want to be too hard on this printer, but even after they tried to remove the lines and couldn't, they were not even able to refund me my money for those prints that didn't work out. All they could do for me was give me credit to buy more prints from them, which what am I going to do with that? Just buy more prints with lines through them? I can't do that. With all that said, I know it's very negative towards this printer. They did print a few things that were okay. And I'm going to show you guys those now. It's this right here, my five by seven prints. And the reason they printed um, better was probably because they're much smaller. It's easier to hide printer mistakes on a smaller print than it is on large prints. And so obviously if I ever wanted to make larger prints, I couldn't go with that printer. But yeah, these came out pretty good. I like these. They're in my shop and they're selling pretty well. There was one that I didn't like how the color came out. And that's just what happens when you're working with an outsourced printer. You're going to be going back and forth about color and different printing qualities. So it's a pick your poison situation if you want to do that or manage and learn how to use your own printer. It either way has its own, you know, set of issues. So yeah, these came out okay. They're not terrible. I personally think they're pretty bad in comparison to the actual art that I was hoping would print. Um, and I can show you guys a comparison later. Um, these ones right here, the lily pad ones, are also okay. They printed pretty well. I like the color. Um, they, for some reason, um, I don't know, printed them off center. I don't know if that was my fault. It could have been my fault. But yeah, they're a little cheaper in my shop because of that. They're slightly off center. As you can see, you can kind of see that there. <laughs> they're a little more to the left. Uh, but these I'm actually going to discontinue from my shop just because I'm making more art and I want to cycle in some more stuff that is a little more in tune of what I'm working on now in these days. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this particular print. I'm going to grab the one that I printed recently on my printer and see the comparison. So the one on the left just for some reason looks like an overexposed version of the one on the right. There's just too much bright light near the rocks for some reason. And also the sharpness is just drastically different. You can kind of see on mine from my printer, it's very sharp and the colors are beautiful and vibrant and there's no overexposure anywhere. It looks exactly how I wanted it to look. And this one, it's just, it's lacking a lot. <laughs> it's not terrible but in comparison to what I can get on my printer, it's pretty bad. Um, so yeah, these aren't on my shop anymore. I'm gonna relist um, with these new ones and hopefully people will like them <laughs> and buy them because um, I really liked this piece of art. It is a little more for the fall season, but I don't care. I'm just gonna list it anyway. I don't wanna wait till, what, September, so. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and list it when I, when I pick a date to update my shop because I need to do that. We'll talk about that later. So real quick, I'm going to show you guys. So they gave me store credit, obviously, and I decided to use it on some stickers because what could go wrong with stickers? And something did go wrong. The colors were way too saturated. And I think, I think it has to do with the fact that this printer in particular was not accepting CMYK files. Like an error would pop up on their system saying, do not send us CMYK files. We want RGB because we have the technology to print from RGB. So I don't know if that was the actual issue, why my files just always came out super saturated when I sent them work. But yeah, that's, that's what happened. Don't use printers that ask you to use RGB files instead of CMYK. My experience is not good. 
So one thing that I'm perfectly okay with outsourcing is stickers. And these are from Sticker App. I just didn't want to deal with, you know, buying equipment for making stickers myself. And I've heard the horror stories of, you know, using Cricut machines and Silhouette machines. So I just thought it'd be easier to outsource and then print my own work. And I forgot to film my sticker sheets, but I also have a few of those that I actually get from Sticker Mule. And as you can see, there's really not a whole lot on my shop right now. I've been really busy making new artwork to go in the shop, testing prints, getting new packaging material because now I'm offering larger prints in the shop as well. I also have a separate Instagram account just for Printy Cat and it is linked in the description if you guys want any updates about the shop or any content specifically like these stickers that I'm making right here. That's going to be all on my Printy Cat Instagram account. Honestly, I really wanted to be completely done with everything for the shop update before this video came out just so you guys could go to the shop immediately and buy anything you liked. Um, but that didn't happen. I still have a lot to do and that's unfortunate, but it, it happens. So I hope you guys uh, at least save the shop and follow me on Instagram and get updates so you'll know when everything does eventually come out. But yeah, that's really all I have left for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing um, and hearing about my Etsy shop. So I will be doing some more content like this in the future. So if you like it, let me know. Alrighty guys, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.